Hey guys, it's Christine. Welcome or welcome back to my channel where I talk about budgeting in my bullet journal. Today's video is going to be a little bit different. I have been putting this video off for a while because I wanted it to be perfect. I wanted to have everything ready. I wanted to have a plan, but it's just never going to be perfect. There's always going to be things that are going to change or things that are not going to be exactly as I planned, so I decided to jump right in. What I'm talking about are my savings challenges. I really meant to do this at the end of 2022, but I was nervous. I didn't know how my finances were going to look in 2023. There were just so many variables. So we're just going to do this, and I hope you will stick around to watch. Okay, so I am still using this bullet journal because of course, look at that beautiful. One day I will make my own cyanotype, but right now it's like raining every day, almost every day in California. So that's not gonna happen right now. Anyway, so my finance goals, or four of them anyway, for this year are to max out my 2022 Roth IRA. I've got $1,000 left to go in that. I can meet that probably by February. My deadline is April 2023. For my Roth IRA 2023, the deadline for that is April 2024, but I would like to max this out at $6,500 by the end of this calendar year. So for the $3,000 that I currently have in my emergency fund, I am just gonna rename that as a buffer or a mini emergency fund, and I'm gonna start over in another account and start this big emergency fund. My goal for this is $12,000. I'm not sure if I can reach that this year, but I sure am gonna try. I think realistically, I could probably put away 5,000, maybe six, but we shall see. Intelligent Portfolio, I am planning to set aside $5,000 so that I can start this intelligent portfolio with Charles Schwab, which is um, like a robo advisor situation. And I really want to do that this year because um, I need all the help I can get. So going to my um, January 11th paycheck budget, I will just show you how that's looking. So for, oops, for my buffer, there's a 3000 right there, Roth IRA, I'm sending, or I sent 300 to that. 100 envelope challenge, I'm budgeting $400. And basically how that's gonna work is I am splitting those into two goals. So the money that I have for the 100 envelope challenge is gonna go towards my intelligent portfolio and the remainder will go towards my emergency fund. For my routine sinking funds, I budgeted $150. For my non-routine sinking fund, I had $100 left over from this budget, so that's what I'm sending to it. So that's sort of a quick breakdown of what money I'm going to be playing with this weekend. So how I'm planning to do that is I am going to do prop money cash stuffing and also like savings challenges. So basically I am a non-cash budgeter. I don't trust myself with cash. I tend to spend it and not look back which is terrible. And I have no digital footprint, um, you know, to look back on, or I have no trail to look back and say, well, I spent such and such amount at such and such store. I can't really do that with cash. Um, I tried. <laughs> I was a cash budgeter before. Um, I probably stopped like in 2020 when going to the bank was a chore. So anyway, um, let me see, let me show you guys something. So I went and bought myself an A5 binder from Amazon. Uh, yes, I did cancel my Amazon Prime, but if you spend over $25, they give you free shipping. So I took advantage of that. I did buy this A5 binder. It doesn't come with envelopes, but I did buy those separately. Um, I bought two packs of eight envelopes each. These are four that I'm not currently using, so I just left them out because it's kind of hard to close this thing. It's a thick boy. Uh, 
So yeah, these are A5 and I didn't get them. I didn't get any stickers to personalize them. I figured I would just put a card and, you know, handwrite on the card. That way I didn't have to spend even more money. I'm going to show you guys the envelopes in a little bit, like along with the cash um, or with the savings challenges, but I want to show you my prop money. So this is like a kid's set, so don't laugh, okay? I was feeling very self-conscious about this and I actually had to very early this morning look up some YouTubers who did like prop money, cash stuffing. <laughs> so I just want to recognize um, Judy Speaks De Niro and Kia's Budget Life. I will link those specific videos that I watched down below because I was feeling very self-conscious about using this fake money and in a little bit I will show you the fake money and you'll know why. So anyway, this is the company that I bought it from. It is Play Money. I wanted to be sure that it looked fake because I didn't want to accidentally um, take fake money to the store or whatever. And, you know, I think that's a felony. <laughs> so, yeah. But it is very fake. And when I opened this, I tried to do like a happy mail thing, but you could hear the disappointment in my voice. And I was very cringe about seeing this and here is why it is very fake so this money will definitely not get mistaken for real money nobody will be taking this money to the bank or to the store um so there's 40 pieces of each denomination in here i really like that about this especially for the price um i felt like i got a lot so the only not the only, but the biggest thing is the logo right here, Learn to Climb. It is the company's logo, so, but it is like right there. And I felt very, um, I was starting to question my decision to do prop money, but one of the main reasons, like I said earlier, is I do not trust myself with cash, cash. Yeah. On Kia's video and Judy's video, they mentioned about why they do prop money. And so I'm going to talk about why I'm going to be doing prop money. Um, I needed a way to keep track of my sinking funds. Like this will be a visual representation of what money I have in my sinking funds. If you've seen any of my previous videos at all, um, maybe not December, but prior to that, I had a really hard time keeping track of where my money was. <laughs> I was doing fine until I wasn't. So basically, if I didn't keep up with the tracking, it got very difficult to do. So that's another reason why I opened an Ally account. Did I mention that earlier? So I did open a high yield savings account with Ally. They have 10 buckets, which are like digital cash envelopes. So most of my um, prop money cash envelopes will correspond with a digital envelope in Ally. So that'll, that's another way for me to keep my money separate but I still wanted a visual representation without having to go over it every single time like in my videos and the second one is I don't trust myself with real cash I already talked about that um, I wanted to keep my money safe from like break-ins or a fire or whatever or you know or me losing it <laughs> which has happened like sometimes I'll find like a random bill somewhere Anyway, um, I also wanted to earn interest in Ally, so it's a high yield savings account. I think they're at a 3.5 APY right now. Um, it's not as much as my T-Mobile checking account. Right. It goes all the way up to 4%, but it's limited to just the 3000 and anything beyond the $3,000 is only getting 2.5%, so I wanted to make that switch to Ally for that reason. Um, and yeah, just the bonus is I don't have to go to the bank to withdraw money, deposit money, or any sort of thing. I hate standing in lines. <laughs> I, I have a phobia, I think, maybe not like clinically, but I have a fear of going to the bank and it getting held up. Another reason why I don't like to carry large sums of cash around, um, cause I am afraid it's going to get stolen from me. <laughs> uh, 
I mean, that's a real fear, I think. So I can't call it a phobia, I guess. Anyway, so moving on. I actually have cash cash um, in my room <laughs> in a little safe. Three guesses as to what the color is. <laughs> but anyway, I am going to go over my real cash cash with you guys at the end if time allows. So we're going to go to this page right here. And if you saw my bullet journal setup video, you'll know about this page and this page. Like I showed it, I think when it was still in pencil, I don't know if I showed it like after I inked it in. Anyway, so basically how this is gonna work is I'm gonna pick two cards. So here's another thing I made. If you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen this. So you're gonna pick, or I'm gonna pick two cards. So 88 and 91. Um, and then I am going to take my handy dandy calculator. She should be prepared. Come on, Christine. So I have allocated $400 to this challenge. So I'm going to take 88, 88 plus 91, and that's 179. So that's going to go into my intelligent portfolio. Okay, and then I'm going to do 400 minus 179 and 221 will go into my emergency fund. So that's how that's going to work. Unfortunately, I don't plan to be doing any giveaways with this challenge. I'm trying to keep my budget very tight. Um, if in the future I decide to, I will let you guys know for sure. Um, oh yeah, so back to this intelligent portfolio stick this here. so in addition to doing that 100 envelope challenge i have a budget tracker so that is stackman um i got this from debt free charts i will link their website down below in the month of january they are having a lot of their finance trackers for free so i definitely uh, urge you to check them out if you are trying to get into savings challenges but don't necessarily want to spend more money on them um so yeah so here for stackman we're aiming for 500 sorry 5000 and each um little circle is going to be 50 dollars so i colored this in you guys i had so much fun coloring this in I mean, you could tell like it's not, it's not great, but like from far away, it doesn't look cool. <laughs> so the example we got was 179. So I will write on the third one, I'll write 179 and color those in. And so whenever I get to $50 increments, I will, you know, color one in and then write the amount that I actually put in there because I don't want to round up. Like, I don't want to have 179 then like, oh, I'll put in $200. Like, no, this, we're going to keep it strict here. My next one is oh, my big emergency fund. So like I said earlier, anything left over from that 100 envelope challenge is going to go in here. And it's going to work the same way as the Pac-Man challenge or the mm, Stack-Man challenge. And this is a big emergency fund. So same thing, I am aiming for 5,000. I thought about putting 12,000 in here, but with each square then being $120, that felt a little daunting. And I thought that I would feel more motivated if I took it in chunks. So even though 5,000 is a big chunk, I think that will be more realistic for me to do and keep me motivated to aim towards my goals. Once I finish this, I will start a new one because we are trying to save 12000 Next one is graduation gift. So this is going to come out of my daughter's account. So basically anything over $140, I will then send to this challenge. Um, and this is the money tree tracker. Again, this is from debt, debt free charts. It's really pretty. Um, 
I penciled this in, but I haven't inked it in yet. I think I am going to do a thousand dollars. I have an idea of what I want to get her, but um, that's sort of still up in the air. We'll see how this goes because I don't know if I'm going to be able to reach that. So basically, this is either a graduation gift or her first job. So we shall see. Uh, for the next four, one, two, three, four, maybe five. Well, we'll do one at a time. For the next few ones, um, they're going to be fixed. So if you remember my budget, I did set aside $40 each paycheck for personal care. This is because I want to make sure I have enough money to get my hair cut. And any extra could go like towards like a manicure or like a massage or something crazy that I don't normally do for myself. But I mean like the haircut and color, normally guys, I don't do that for myself. I only started that in 2021, 20, maybe. Um, yeah, anyway. $40 is going to go towards my car maintenance fund. I want to make sure I have money in there for any unforeseen things. I will touch on this again in a little while. Because I know $40 a paycheck is not enough. Because I was putting $50 a paycheck in it before and that certainly wasn't enough last year because of things that happened. Um, like I needed a new battery, I needed I think a new tire, um, was it my brakes, and I have a chip in my windshield, <laughs> my car engine. Anyway, so stuff is going on with my car and I need extra money in this. So basically anything that is not coming out of my regular budget, my variable spending everyday sort of budget is going to come out of here for car maintenance. So this is hopefully going to come in handy. Hopefully I won't need it, but I, I know I will. So for copays and meds, again, this is for stuff that's not going to come out of my regular budget. So like my, you know, refills that are a dollar or three dollars or even like $16. Like that's not going to come out of here. These are more for the big guys. I'm expecting my first prescription, not my first. Um, I'm expecting my biggest prescription to come out around maybe February. And that's going to be like $150, I think, because I am not going to meet my medication deductible by then. Like they increased the deductible. So that's great. Um, gifts and giving, I do want to make sure I'm putting $20 uh, paycheck into this. The first birthday is actually in January, so that's going to come straight out of my regular budget. But from then on, or from now on, I'll be putting aside $20, and the next birthday I think is in May. Yeah, I think it's in May. So that's definitely going to be enough um, by then, and then I'll just keep putting money in this. And using that for gifts. Um, family fund doesn't have a specific dollar amount to it. There's a lot of things that we want to do. There's um, a pottery class that I want to take with my son. I want to go ice skating. I want to go to a home opener for our local um, baseball team. And there's just a lot of little things. And I didn't feel like putting a cap on this or a goal or an end goal on this was really necessary or even practical because then we would be pulling from it. And then also I didn't want to set aside a specific amount until I knew what we were saving up for. So uh, eventually I'm just going to put like, maybe I'll have another index card in here and I'll put pottery class, you know, I think it's $49 per person, I think for a two or three hour session. And then you get like two, fired glazed and fired items that you make and yeah so that'll be fun but that's not <laughs> I'm not marking that in here yet so for travel this is the travel doodles and again this is from debt free tracker these are the summer travel doodles I picked summer because we're in California and you know, besides the current rain situation, it is pretty much always summer somewhere. Um, but also because in SoCal, it's usually nice and warm. 
Um, so here for summer, we want to go to the beach. I want to go to Griffith Park and do like a hike. There's a lot of things on my 23 and 2023 that I want to do that I can knock out with this challenge. So I'm saving up a thousand dollars. I know gas is going to be like 140. Lodging for a three day weekend is probably going to be like four to five hundred dollars. And then, you know, the rest, um, I'll have to budget out, but I am starting out with a thousand dollars cause I think that is a safe amount to save, I think. Um, but again, as it gets closer to summer, as I have more plans, um, then I'll know ahead of time, like how much I really do need to save. So maybe a thousand dollars is just the starting or maybe it's going to be too much and then I'll have money extra. So next is tattoo. And for this savings challenge I have, or for this, yeah, for this envelope, I have Liz and Les's, um, savings challenge tracker. So this is basically a choose your own and I chose $200. So my tattoo let me grab my calculator. So my tattoo artist um, changed her rates. She now charges $180 and she has a two hour minimum. So that's 360. But I already sent her $100 for a deposit. But I also want to tip her 25%, which is like 90. So this is going to save me six hundred dollars if I do twenty dollars at a time and my appointments in December you guys but I also wanted to make sure that I had another hour extra and then um, I wanted to make sure that I had 25% tip in case I did need that extra hour so I'm at 575 right now so I think the 600 is a safe bet if I don't get to it by then or if I end up saving all this money and not needing it it will roll over into something else so I feel okay about that and I will link Liz's Etsy and YouTube channel down below if you guys aren't already following her you should her videos are amazing like just she's an awesome person too it's not just her videos Okay, next is iPhone, and that is using the Super Saver Challenge. This is from Debt Free Charts. Again, you guys, I love her charts. Um, so I colored this myself. I don't know if you guys can see. See the little mistake right there. And I had a lot of fun coloring this in. So I wanted to do, like, different colors in the brick pattern right there. And I added, like, Bowser's flag up here and... This wasn't there, like, it's just so much fun. Anyway, I'm getting sidetracked. So the goal is for my son's iPhone. He's been wanting an iPhone for a while now. He hasn't asked in a long time. He's got the XR, whereas um, I don't know how many times I've had to pay for his sister to get um her phone replaced so I don't know how many deductibles I've had to pay I'm quite frankly tired of it and I feel like he doesn't really ask for much so I wanted to get him a new iPhone um, when I asked him what he wanted he said he wanted a new phone case he's so sweet you guys so um, I do want to treat him to a new iPhone but I also don't want to go into debt for it so we're gonna go ahead and save $1,500 for that and that is priced out for the iPhone 14 Pro Max with the 256 gigabytes plus the Apple Care with theft and loss for paid for the full two years so that's why it's so high plus some accessories like you know um, like a charging brick and a phone case a screen protector all the good stuff anyway and next is birthday eats and I have another savings tracker from Liz and Les I had to ask her how to do this one and she said that you basically just pick whatever you want 
at whatever pace that you want. So I really like that there's different ones. So the cheese is $5, the flour is 10, the little leaf thing is $15, and the alarm clock is 20. So this is for my birthday meal. Um, I do wanna do temenyaki, teppanyaki. I'm hoping $250 is gonna be enough for that. I think the last time we went was for my mom's birthday and I only paid for myself and my son and I spent $120. So if I treat out other people, you know, I think 250 is going to be enough, hopefully. So, <laughs> um, yeah, we'll see. So there's a few other trackers that I got. Let me set this aside and look at what I had to do here. Just so I can close it, I had to slide those around or else it won't close. And now I understand why. Cash budgeters have the envelopes without the zip, the zippy things, because it won't fit otherwise. And now I also know why you have multiple binders, because now I'm wanting a new binder, and I, I think I'm gonna wait to see how this one goes, and you know, before I buy myself something else. Um, so here from Debt Free Charts again is a hundred money doodles. I was gonna use this for something, or I was gonna use this for my emergency fund, but um, I'm not sure yet. So it's still in pencil right here. But aren't these cute? Um, hundred leaves doodles. This was gonna be like a dollar each, so that was gonna save a hundred dollars. But again, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with that, so I can still erase and change my mind. Um, that's a lot of savings, latte savings. I thought it was so cute. I don't, I don't really have a use for this, but I thought it was cute. So I printed it and it's free. Like I got all the files for free. And so I'm totally loving this. And like, I could see myself coloring this just because like, if I don't use this for a savings challenge, I think I will just color it, like cut, cut this out and like paste it somewhere in my bullet journal. So this one is from Liz and Les. She sent me this one. It has two files. So one I've been filling in with other stuff. I'm kind of embarrassed to show it. So I won't show it until I've finished it. But um, so this is a friends theme one. Basically it's, you know, just like the game we used to play when we were kids. If you're like an 80s baby. Did 90s babies do this too? 80s and 90s. So choose a dollar value for answers A through D. Pick a magic number between 7 and 15. Cross off items using your magic number. Pay yourself that amount. Ultimately, you'll discover your fake future. So, yeah. Again, I don't have um, an envelope this corresponds with. I think I will buy something for myself using this. But I'm going to hold on to that for later use. So I totally meant to thank these people or to recognize them at least during my video. I'm really sorry, you guys. So for prop money ideas, I did get that initially with Vito with Vicky and Debt to None. Um, they do prop money cash stuffing. Um, also Vita with Vicky, she mentioned on her channel one time that she needs to start quick for her fake money. So I did buy that, but I can't find it right now. Um, and for the 100 envelope challenge, I got that idea. Well, there's a lot of people who do 100 envelope challenge, but Katie from Katie of the House is the first one that I remember anyway. The first one that is a digital budgeter who did the 100 envelope challenge. And I know she got the idea from somebody else, but I don't know who. So I am crediting Katie and I'm going to link her channel down below. Um, other channels that I watched that have the 100 envelope challenge that are cash budgeters are the Crafty Budgeter and Lisa Marie Budgets. I don't think Lisa Marie does the 100 envelope challenge anymore, but she used to. So I will still link her channel below. Um, as I said, Debt to None is also doing the Prop Money $100. No, she's also doing the Digital 100 envelope challenge. Yes. Okay, and I already told you guys about Judy Speaks Dinero and Kia's budget life for 
a little bit of um, encouragement for prop money, um, for using prop money, because I was feeling really, really self-conscious about that. So I think that's it. I hope I didn't miss anybody. Um, Liz, thank you, Liz and Les, for the awesome savings challenges. There are some other savings challenges that I want to use. I'm watching everybody's videos and keeping a mental note. Um, there's one in particular that I really want to buy, but it requires me buying a dice, <laughs> a set of dice. So I think I'll wait to see if like if they have dice at the Dollar Tree or something. I'm pretty sure they do. Oh, and thanks for debt-free charts because of those awesome, very adorable savings challenges. I didn't need to spend any extra money on, on those. If you made it this far to the video, thank you so very much for your support. Thanks for being here with me and listening to me explain what I'm going to be doing with my money for the next foreseeable future. Um, yeah, if you have any tips, tricks, whatever, please comment them down below. Hit like, follow for more videos like this. I am normally just in my bullet journal, like um, budgeting things out. This is something new for me. So if you would be kind as to show me a little bit of love, that would be greatly appreciated. Anyway, if you want to see my projected budget for 2023, I'm going to go ahead and link it right here, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.